results of the first day of Julian Assange's full extradition hearing. I'm in London right now outside of Belmarsh Prison and also Woolwich Crown Court, which was where Julian Assange appeared earlier today. The prosecution is claiming that WikiLeaks revelations could have potentially led to people being hurt or being targeted. However, at the same time, they failed to prove that anybody has been hurt or died as a result of WikiLeaks revelations. The defense, on the other hand, is arguing that this is a political case and that Julian Assange is being extradited for political purposes. This is a violation of the U.S.-U.K. treaty. You cannot be extradited out of the U.K. to the United States if it is for a political reason, and they're arguing that in this case it certainly is. Now, outside the court, I was there all day today. Yellow Vest protesters and other Julian Assange supporters were outside showing lots of support for Julian. Everything remained very peaceful and uh, the police were there. They were making sure that people were not blocking traffic and that uh, vehicles could get in and out of the parking lot to the courthouse. But other than that, there was so much support for Julian Assange and uh, lots of signs out. And um, behind me right now is actually a group of yellow vests who are camping outside of the courthouse and outside of the prison to show their support all week. I will have more updates for you all tomorrow and I will be reporting outside the courtroom the rest of the week. I am outside Belmarsh Prison in Woolwich Crown Court in London. Today is day two of Julian Assange's full extradition hearing. The legal proceedings are continuing today and we are hearing from inside the courtroom that the defense is continuing to discuss some of the revelations that were brought up yesterday being the fact that there has been no evidence and no proof to suggest that anybody was injured as a result of WikiLeaks publications. The defense debunked the long-standing myth that WikiLeaks was a publication that released the unredacted names of informants and potentially put people's lives at risk. This is not true. In fact, it was David Lee and Luke Harding of The Guardian who published a password to uh, various cables, and this was addressed in court. Uh, right now, I am joined by former MP and talk show host, George Galloway. George, thank you so much. How are you Pleasure. Doing? Pleasure. So uh, today, obviously, wrapped up the second day of this full extradition hearing. What is your take on what has happened so far in the courtroom? Well, I've got no confidence in this lower court. Uh, the process has been wholly corrupted from the beginning, and the uh, people presiding over it uh, are uh, riven with conflicts of interest, and they have no interest in the actual arguments being made. So I see it more as a, a rubber stamp uh, court. But further up the tree, uh, when this matter goes to and then appeal, uh, more senior judges who have to take more care about the law, uh, I have some hope that we can win the argument about abuse of process and disproportionality. Julian is facing 175 years in prison if he goes back to a show trial in the United States on espionage charges even though none of the alleged offenses that he is said to have committed took place in the United States. He has no loyalty to the United States. He's not a citizen of the United States. He's never signed any document that he would keep secret anything uh, in the United States. He's an Australian uh, operating in London and elsewhere in Europe. He has absolutely no responsibility to harbor the secrets of the United States war machine. Uh, so disproportionality is, uh, is an issue, but the abuse of process is so stark, so ugly, uh, that it's difficult to see how more senior judges cannot give that due weight. And of course, the biggest corruption of process is the fact that his lawyer-client confidentiality was for years breached by secret CIA filming of every meeting he ever had with any of his lawyers to talk about extradition. Now in any other court on any other day, this would already have been thrown out because of that corruption. If you were on a trial for a litter offense, the case would be thrown out if it turned out that the prosecuting authority had access to your discussions with your lawyer. 
right? It seems that that would be sufficient to throw this case out of court, which is telling me that this is certainly a selective uh, prosecution and also a uh, political persecution. And you made the point earlier tonight that under the U.S.-U.K. treaty, um, the U.K. cannot extradite a person to the United States uh, for political purposes. And many are arguing that this is, in fact, a political case. Can you speak yeah. to that? Well, 4.1 uh, of the extradition treaties, they are on the face of the treaty. Uh, at sufficiently high 4.4 4, uh, that political offences cannot be considered under this extradition treaty. Uh, it's not that they can't ever be extradited for political offences, but a wholly different body of law has to be used other than the extradition treaty and due cause, just cause I think you call it in the United States, has to be shown. And as they cannot show it, as is already evident, first two days at this lower level in the courts, uh, I would be confident that we would uh, win that. So uh, it's persecution, no prosecution. It's blatantly political. His offences alleged could not possibly be more political. Uh, the idea that revealing uh, war crimes committed in Iraq uh, is not political is just moonshine. So, uh, what Julian Assange is on trial for doing is telling the truth in the public interest uh, and doing so not for glory or for money, uh, but to serve the interests of the public. And if truth becomes treason, as his learned counsel said, then we're all in trouble. And the first people who are in trouble are Britain's journalists, if we have any, uh, because, of course, that's supposed to be their job. Right. Um, but recently, fortunately, we have been seeing more corporate media journalists starting to show support for Julian Assange, but I know we would all like to see more of that. I would have to say that it's probably a very effective disinformation campaign that has led to many people to not want to support Julian Assange, including journalists. Yes, the, the elite knew what they were doing, this era of identity politics, when they uh, put the spot on Julian Assange on sexual matters, they knew that that would alienate the woke liberal uh, intelligentsia, the chatterati, the salon uh, socialists and columnists and so on. They knew that that's what that would achieve. That's why they went for that. They didn't go for, you know, tax evasion or accuse them of shoplifting in in, uh, in a store somewhere. They went for something that in this era, in the era of Me Too and all of that, would uh, put the mark of Cain on his forehead. And that's why, uh, I mean, there's a very big attendance here today. But I've got to tell you, having spent a lifetime on the left, none of the left are here, uh, none of them. Uh, and even people like Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, and his adjutant, John McDonnell, have joined the campaign half-heartedly at the 11th hour. In fact, 11 hours and 55 minutes, uh, and, and, and have done so half-heartedly. And that's because of these absolutely fake, set up, fit up allegations against Julian Assange in Sweden. I think it's really unfortunate and it really shows that we have some systemic issues at hand here, yeah. that politicians are unwilling to comment on the most serious press freedom case of our time. Yeah, well, the, the only, the first member of parliament to visit Julian Assange in Belmarsh jail had to come from Australia to do it. Not a single British member of parliament had at that point asked to go in and see Julian Assange. The most celebrated publisher, whistleblower, truth teller in the 21st century. And the biggest freedom of speech issue uh, that I hope we'll ever see in our lifetime. Absolutely. George Galloway, thank you. Pleasure.